Now, let me introduce Stine, who will take you for the next session. Stine is an MDP, um, Managing Director and, and Partner from BCG, coming for, for us from Germany. And Stine was, is an esteemed speaker for us on all AI topics. You might have seen her just on Tuesday on CNBC. Stine, thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you very much for the introduction, and um, really great to be here. What I will talk about today is um, a recent report um, that we are publishing here on navigating generative AI, an executive roadmap in terms of how to deal with generative AI. <coughs> why are we talking about this here very specifically, and why do we think there is a very, very important focus for banks and financial institutions? Everything AI-related naturally relies on data, on large amounts of data that we need to have. And banking is a very, very data-heavy industry, and banking has one thing that is extremely special. Okay. Better? Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, banking has one thing that is really special, which is the individual transactional data of the clients. As a bank, we can generate extremely powerful insights by knowing the detailed behavioral um, information from our clients. And this is something that is an extreme advantage compared to most other industries. And of course, all different types of AI rely on this underlying data. And when I mean all types of AI, there is the traditional world of AI that we like to call predictive AI which is something that banks have been using already for more than a decade. But now, with generative AI, there is really the opportunity to kind of fully transform and take the AI journeys for financial institutions to the next level. Let me maybe take one step back and briefly talk about the differentiation of those two types of AI and why we think this is really important. There is the traditional predictive AI that focuses on algorithms that can assign probabilities, categorize outcomes, and support decisions. And then there's the generative AI that actually focuses on creating tim uh, text, images, and these things. And we can think of this as the human brain. The predictive AI being the left part of the human brain that helps us with logic and calculation, and the generative AI being the right part of the brain, which helps us focusing on synthesis, on creativity, and on text creation. And this is exactly the same for those two types of AIs. And as for our brain, it is extremely important to bring both of them together and leverage both of them. So banks, as they have been using the predictive AI already for quite some time, those that have been using it now have a strategic advantage in terms of integrating the generative AI component on top of that. And I think this is a really important message. We hear a lot of executives at the moment being wondering all, like, all the revolution on generative AI triggered by ChatGPT and all of these tools. What does it mean? Do we actually have to start from scratch and redo everything? And we firmly believe that this is not the case. You will need both of those, the traditional predictive AI and the generative AI, and the AI strategy of banks should be built on those. And those that already have successful predictive AI strategies in place will have a clear advantage bringing this now in. To bring those two parts of the brain together and really leverage the most for financial industries, as Romain has mentioned, there is plenty of opportunities for value creation really across the value chain of financial institutions. And there are those use cases and application areas and, um, that come from the marketing and sales side. There are the more traditional ones that focus on identifying opportunities for cross-sell, for upsell, for retention management. And then uh, there are those that are much more driven by the generative AI component, like the content creation for hyper-personalization of both text and imagery. And then when we bring those two parts of the brain together, <laughs> we can again identify which clients to reach out to, and then we can create the messaging and really go in a hyper-personalized way. 
I want to highlight this really applies across the full value chain. Also, in areas like risk and compliance that are like very specific to a large degree of the banking industry. You can think of it on the credit risk side. You may want to have an early warning of your clients in place where you identify risk indicators of what's happening with your clients. This is a predictive AI component. And then on top of that, you can actually leverage the generative AI to synthesize a credit report. So also here, you can really leverage the full potential of the brain of the different types of AI to really transform and create huge value for financial institutions. But, <laughs> as always, while AI and the different solutions that we have at hand now are amazing, there are limitations to all types of AI solutions. We know this from the traditional world of AI. AI typically works best when the human comes in to complement for those areas that actually fall outside of the, I would call it, area of expertise of the AI. In the traditional world of AI, let's think about a credit application. And a credit application for standardized credit cards. We have plenty of them, they are standardized. We can perfectly use an AI scoring to take decisions. But if we have complex structured finance deals, every deal is really unique and we need a human to actually take the decision. And the same actually is true for generative AI. A recent survey from the Bruce Henderson Institute has investigated using the different areas of expertise for the generative AI and when are they contributing and when are there, what are actually the limitations of it. And what this study has shown is that on the creative product innovation task, which is something that clearly falls within the area of expertise of generative AI, there was a 40% improvement by leveraging this technology. Whereas, if we have been focusing on complex business problem solving tasks with a lot of unclear information, something that naturally doesn't fall into the area of expertise of generative AI, then actually the output was 23% worse than without using that technology. And I think this is really, really important, right? There are a lot of amazing opportunities that come through predictive AI, through generative AI, through bringing them together and really leveraging the full brain. There are some limitations that AI has, and we always have to be aware of them, complement where needed, and be aware of what is the area of expertise that we are actually talking about and that we are leveraging those for. Um, having said this, when we are aware of what the limitations are and how we can use this best, what we see is typically looking for what we would call the golden pattern. The golden patterns are patterns in terms of processes that we have across the bank where we have three steps. The first step is processing information. That's the core. The second step is evaluating or deciding based on this information. And the third step is taking an action, potentially a creative action, because we need to have some sort of personalized reach out. And those three steps comprise a lot of processes a lot, across a lot of different um, values in like the, the banking sector. And for each of those three steps, we can typically enrich in a very, very powerful way by the different types of predictive AI, of generative AI, and thereby we really bring them together. And what that actually does, and we will have a look at an example in a second, is it's not only if we really do this end-to-end, -end, identify those golden patterns, and then apply the AI technology, this does not only allow us to tweak the process at small, at small pieces, but really fully transform end-to-end -end the way that those things are actually working. And maybe let's have a look at two examples. The first one is we get an inquiry from a client, so we get a request. So at first, we can analyze the question, Therefore, we can leverage the generative AI that is being raised by the customer. Then, based on that, we can leverage the predictive AI 
that selects how to reply to the customer. So what is the preferred type of reply? What is the preferred channel? And then on top of that, we can leverage the generative AI that actually formulates the response in the best possible way and sends it out to the client. So we really have an end-to-end -end approach, not a tweak at one place, where we bring the different components of the AI, the different components of the brain actually together. The same also applies into much more risk and compliance type of tasks, like money laundering, catching the bad guys. We can also be much more efficient by that. We can synthesize a lot of the complex unstructured data that we have from our clients, leveraging um, the generative AI to get it in a structured format. And then on top of that, we can leverage the predictive AI to identify the patterns of a risky client and then have the generative AI formulate the special activity report, the report that is required for filing. So also here again, it is not about an individual tweak here and there. It's really about an end-to-end -end transformation of the process. And again, this typically works best when we have those golden patterns at hand and when we bring the traditional and the generative AI component together. Then is when we typically see the highest impact. Of course, um, this will have impact on all of us in the future. <laughs> we strongly believe no bank will ever be run by AI on its own. <laughs> but of course, the way that every employee will interact with AI will change in the future. And it is very likely that nearly all employees will be in contact with AI solutions. And there's different types of being in contact with AI solutions. There, is, there are those people that will build AI. Those are really more the quantitative, the technical people that actually build models and develop solutions. Then there are those roles that shape the AI. If we go back to the example of the money laundering, those would be the people that actually define the processes, how to integrate the AI solutions. Then there are the people that will use the AI. Those are the people, the relationship manager, the call center agents, the credit officers, all of those people who will consume the output and complement where needed and then do the reach out. And then there are the people that will actually govern the AI. A very, very important topic across industry of very specific importance in the world of financial institutions. Why? <laughs> Why am I highlighting this point on governing AI? The technology has been evolving extremely fast. Um, and regulatory uncertainty is most likely going to prevail still for a bit of time. And in recent surveys that we have done, we see a lot of executives being concerned also about the role of AI, roughly 70% being concerned due to the traceability of large language models, another roughly 70% being concerned due to the risk of data breaches and how to deal with this. And while the regulation is being worked out and probably three regulatory regimes being of highest importance for the financial institutions by the ASEAN guiding um, principle, the EU AI Act, and the new US regulatory approach, there is still some uncertainty around this. What we believe is financial institutions will need to have an approach in place, their own governing principles, to deal with AI solutions. And those types of safeguards and guiding principles to actually deal with AI we would typically recommend to focus them across the values and purpose of each financial institution. And this is something that we call a responsible AI framework. And once you have something like this in place, we believe there is strong potential to start the development and set your own guardrails and safeguards in terms of how to deal with it. The responsible AI strategy should be front and center of the development of different AI and generative AI solutions. And what we see is institutions that do have a responsible AI framework typically achieve um, a significant higher amount of business impact by applying the different AI solutions. And what I think is also extremely important to highlight is Ideally, these initiatives are directly driven from the CEO. 
whenever those responsible AI governing initiatives are driven by the CEO directly, roughly 60% more impact of these initiatives is achieved within an organization. And to really deal with this, there should be a clear governance process, process approach including monitoring. The tech and tools need to be solved to support the responsible AI. And of course, the culture and the change management need to build around it to really fully integrate these technologies. So, um, concluding here and also handing over to my colleagues um, for the panel discussion, what we believe really is huge amounts of data and a clear transformative potential on banks by bringing the two parts of the brain together and having them act as one. And then there is huge value that I'm sure we can all generate um, for the financial industry. Thank you very much.